Fantastic. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. And, and I can see, looking at the capacity crowd, we've got lots of different coloured shirts tonight. There's an orange one. There are lots of blue ones. There's one from the 1960s. And I'll tell you what, I'm feeling rather ill. There's a yellow one. <laughs> I'll introduce you to our extra special guest very shortly. Hello. Welcome along to this week's edition of Life's a Pitch TV. It's the East Anglian Derby Day edition of Life's a Pitch TV. So whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on podcast, thanks for joining us today. Brought to you in association with our main sponsor, DPS Tech. And also a big thank you to our other sponsors, All About Hearing, Marketing Company Ginger Pickle, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, The Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Venue 16, The Dove in Ipswich, John Keeble Cars in Bramford, and Fred Olsen Logistics. Let me introduce you to the team. It's Terry Butcher. Yay! It's Russell Osman. And from TWTD.co.uk, it's Phil Ham. Richard and Mark and John on technicals. Leslie's our floor manager. And welcome, Capacity Crowd. Yay! What do you think of them, Butch? They're the best crowd since last week. Unbelievable. <laughs> no, they are. It's just, I don't think we can get anybody in here. I think it's we have be... actually reached capacity tonight. <laughs> it's going to be like Portman Road will be on Saturday. Absolutely <laughs> jam-packed. Jam-packed and bouncing. Massive, massive bouncing. crowd. We've got sellout crowd tonight, which is brilliant. And we have got a very, very special guest tonight. Not only is he a former Ipswich Town goalkeeper, he's a former international German goalkeeper. <laughs> Would you please make some noise for Laurie Sivall? Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> Feel nice to hear that song That's again? really lovely, yeah. Appreciate her. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, look, just, just before we get into Ipswich Town, just t talk to me about the, the German goalkeeper bit, because that was you and Russ escaped to victory, wasn't it? That was, yes. Um, well, I was the, a German goalkeeper, and I they had that the, the overhead kick, if you recall, in the, the game. And um, in a game, that's hard to, to predict that from an overhead kick while the game is flowing. So at the end of the match, we had to get all the production company around the 18-yard box with Pele and myself and this camera that um, went about three million times a second to slow the actual motion down. And they would lob the balls to Pele and he would do these overhead kicks. And... Um, Obviously, you had to make it realistic, so I kept saving it. And then until, <laughs> <laughs> until he got a really cracking one, which was really authentic, and that was what went into the production at the end of the film. So that was it. No. And also, I had to teach Stallone how to handle a football. Well, he was crap. Uh, he was. <laughs> it wasn't that good. Oh, he wasn't that he good. He wasn't that good. He'd, no. he'd catch it. He would then get up bounce it around like a basketball. I'm sure he was going to lob it into the top of the net, so he had to top and stop it. But, uh, um, yeah, and that was really mine. But Russell obviously had a bigger part than me, so he's, he would tell you a lot more. But uh, actually, I wanted to ask you, Russell, oh, did, you, did they offer you a contract in Hollywood? Because <laughs> he was a handsome bugger, so did they? Yeah. <laughs> I did get invited back. I, you did. Yeah. I know. This was this true. Yeah, John yeah, good. Houston. That's nice to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, we had the um, the end of filming party yeah. in the hotel. Yeah. Up in Bobby Moore's suite, and we got all the the lighting boys yeah. had done all the lights, yeah. and the sound boys had put all the disco gear in and everything yeah. for us. Everybody came along. Michael Caine came along. John Houston came along. And at the end of the evening, he said to me, he said. Um, why don't you come back to, to Hollywood yeah. with us? I'm sure you can make a living out there. And I thought I was... Yeah. <laughs> Doing I what, Russell? What I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, make a few. Yeah. few on the side. Um, but I thought, no, no. F football was my game. Yeah. <laughs> I think I made the right decision. Though. Yeah. Well, right. When, did you, when did they tell you you were going to be the German goalkeeper? Well, they told me because when I was younger, I had this really gruff voice and... Um, I failed the voice test, so I was then put into the German. Well, so did goal. Walkie, but he still yeah. ended up on our yeah, side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not as gruff as mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, Herr Schmidt. Yeah. Was Schmidt was yeah, Herr Schmidt. Yeah, Schmidt. Um, I remember the, the first overhead kick that Pelé did. 
was in the bottom left-hand corner, yeah. and it was a magnificent, yeah. absolutely magnificent save that you pulled off. Yeah. And everybody said, Laurie, you're supposed to let them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we had to keep doing it again, again and again. And, again, and, again. Right. Yeah. and then the one that did end up in the back of the net, you know, you wouldn't have got anywhere near no. it either, would you? No, well, that was set up, wasn't it, by these, because they had to put these cameras around. Don't spoil it. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, I'll say no more. Yeah. <laughs> but so, you can tell. So can. But when did you find out? Did you find out before you went over there or when you actually got there? What, for the voice test? No, not for the voice oh. test. For actually be a German goalkeeper. When I was over there. Was, um, did, you yeah. have a, did you have a choice or were you just told that was what you Yeah, well, doing? I was then put in the German goal, yeah. And we had, was it Robin Turner? When, was it Robin yeah, Robin whenever? Turner. Yeah, yeah, Robin, he, was a, yeah. he was a Nazi as yeah, well. He was yeah. a Nazi, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we'd do anything for a Deutschmark. We would do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No more. Still a fantastic movie. Yeah. You know, every time we all love it, don't we? When it's on. Yeah. And you thank can God for ITV4. Well, yeah. and, and be on again in a couple of weeks. Don't worry yeah. about that. We should have had the royalties, right? I think it's on more now yeah. than The Great Escape. I think. Yeah. It is. Well, if you could name a better football film. Yeah. Not yeah. Really. Again, there is one. Fever no. Pitch. Yeah. No. But the other thing is, you got to meet so many uh, Pele. Well, obviously, Pelle, you saved yeah. from Pele. Maybe yeah. saved from yeah. Pele. I mean, he was yeah. the, the top but man. John Houston, who was a huge director of the time, wasn't he? I mean, yeah. he'd done the African Queen, all these huge films in Hollywood, and but he he when we first met him, he, he was in a wheelchair with a lung uh, uh, oxygen tank, wasn't he? Do you remember under his chair? Yeah, it was. He, he was was, horrible, wasn't it? And we thought, who the hell is he? And then we found out that was John Houston. <laughs> <laughs> Laurie, you asked me a question. I'll ask you a question then. When uh, you were playing in goal, yeah. did you prefer to play behind Hunter and Beatty, <laughs> Osman and Butcher? Can you reach him for me, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> or Osman and Moore? Osman and Moore and you, well... I'd never played with Osmond and Moore. Oh, we were at the other end. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hunter and Beatty, Osmond and Butcher. Well, now you're putting me on the spot I here, am, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Right. That's a difficult question. Just be careful how you answer this. Yeah. Video, <laughs> it's a very delicate one. I'll here. sit on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Big Al's coming in in a yeah, minute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, he was a strange man, wasn't he? Big Al, we used to call him the strange man because... You'd go into training. Well, you didn't call it to his face. That's right. Yeah, I did. did I said, you're a very strange man, Alan. <laughs> because, <laughs> because you'd go into training in the morning. One day he'd hug you. The next one he'd thump you on the arm. And uh, you'd say, morning, Al. He'd either get you in a headlock or hug you. So we used to call him the strange man. And he loved that. He loved being called a strange man. I think. <laughs> that was one of his little... Uh, Lots things. more to talk about with yeah, you in a yeah. moment or two. But uh, let's bring it back to uh, to town. And uh, let's talk about the season so far. And uh, it's sponsored by the Dove in Ipswich. <laughs> So let's start by uh, the match at Borough last weekend. Anybody went? Excellent, excellent. What a game, Phil Ham. I know. 2-0. We just can't stop winning, can we? It's just extraordinary. Going away to teams that you, you look at it on paper and think, well, this will be a tough one, won't it? And then we win 2-0. And at the end of it, you think, well, we're much better than them. Um, Michael Carrick was... Was 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 um, you know at the end he just kind of admitted that they weren't they didn't have enough to beat us. Um, great goal from Connor Chaplin again. Um, that combination between him and uh, Wes Burns down the right and uh, terrific strike on this occasion. Uh, just at the right time really because I think Middlesbrough were starting to come into it a little bit more uh, just before half time and then second half. Um, Amari Hutchinson sent away, Chaplin again, great uh, through ball, um, and really it, we saw it out quite comfortably from there. Really, I think there was, I think um, Vaslav Hladky made a couple of saves, um, one of which was from Luke Wolfenden, sort of misheading something. But other than that, we were very comfortable. It was, uh, yeah, another another famous win. Really, you look at that as a, a, um, yeah, a, another another good win. Away from home. Another away from home win midweek, of course, as well. I know. And off to Watford, another difficult side. Another team that's, I think this is their second year in the championship after relegation. Um, you, you know, you expect a fair bit from these teams. I mean, obviously, we, we played West Brom a few weeks ago and they were much better than us and, 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 and deserved to beat us, really. Um, but 
We even, we even gave him a goal this time, didn't we? And uh, yeah, we like to give people a head start now and again. Occasionally, don't we, you know? occasionally. It's like I mean, when I was little, you'd give a team a head start now and again. Yeah, if they, you they were weaker. A, a rare Hladke error. Um, whether it was the conditions or, or he just sort of misread the situation, one or two people wondered whether he might not actually have seen the Watford player because uh, the, the, the yellow seats behind him in the. No, it was just it, it was just a crap pass. Yeah, it, it was. was I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to find reasons why it was a crap pass, but it was a crap. I don't, I don't think you can sh- sugarcoat that. No, much, no. no and he point. gave it away and. The, the, they took that chance well, um, and um, but we gradually played ourselves back into the game. There's never any panic. Um, Hutchinson was a danger breaking in in that sort of right of the area. Two or three times he, he caused a few a few problems, and then uh, Hurst obviously followed up. And then second half, Sammy Morsey. Just just when the game, I think we were kind of thinking it might end up one-one. Um, he forced an error and then took his chance with a with a confidence of a of an Alan Brazil or a Paul Mariner with that, that sort of you know you didn't really think it was ever in doubt when he was through on goal it was a it was a great and again saw the game out perfectly really I don't think Watford had a chance in the final five or ten minutes did they What do you think boys Well I think we play very much on the the front foot at the moment and um, epitomised by how Morsey got his goal at the end of the game. You know, he's made the first challenge, made the second challenge. A horrendous mistake from the centre half. You know, real old school touch on the ball that gave it away. But his finish was sublime. You know, he was very composed there. You know, and it did show you that even though he's on his last yellow card, that he can behave himself in a game and he can have a, an impact in a game. And um, it was a good performance for him. Did you think that when Morsey got the ball and he's one on one against the keeper? Just inside him was Freddie. Big Freddie was there and he was all open. So I thought maybe he's going to just square it and it's a tap in for Freddie. But I wonder if Freddie was thinking, if he misses here, I'm going to smash him because he's going to play me in. Because well, I would have done. A centre forward would have. Uh, Morsi said afterwards that he couldn't get the ball from under his feet. He heard Freddie yeah. shouting at him. Um, but I think, he, you know, by that time the goalkeeper was on him and I think he had to... To, to take the... He had to put the ball on the back uh, of the uh, net. Yeah, yeah, had to put it through yeah. the keeper's well, legs, didn't he? It was a great finish. Good it finish. was, it was. Really, really good. good finish. How often do you get to see them, Laurie? I've been down a few times this season, actually, because I like how they play football. That's good to watch after a, li- a few seasons where that wasn't very, uh, what was the word, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pleasing on the eye. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I have started coming in the last couple of seasons. I quite enjoy it, actually. They play good football and they stick to their principles, don't they? Do you like Which the way good. the goalkeeper plays out from the back? Well, I, I, <laughs> that's a bit scary at times, isn't it? But that's how what he's told to do. So, you yeah. know, and they've got the players on with the ability on the ball now to do it. So. He's got better at it. Yeah. And the players around him have got yeah, better players. That's right. They've got the confidence it. on a ball. Yeah. But would you would you have been comfortable playing now? I know you're a bit old, but I mean, yeah. if you were, you know, you know <laughs> previously... <laughs> If you, would you have been comfortable well, think, passing out from the back and everything like that? No? Yeah, I think I could have, probably would have done. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I would. That would be quite. Actually, I used to throw it a lot to Millsy anyway when we played. Millsy well, yeah. used to accept the ball quite a lot from short and play it from the back. And then, to be honest, and then Millsy would lose the ball. No, he wouldn't. He would not. <laughs> <laughs> He'd put it down the aunt Sally, as Cyril yeah, used to say, down yeah. the alley. <laughs> down the alley. Yeah. <laughs> down the Bang. aunt Sally. Put it down. <laughs> then we'd lose the ball. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. 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 But now they, they try and build up and keep short parts to keep the possession, don't they? Yeah. Which A lot's they been do. made of the uh, the pitch now compared to when you were yeah. uh, in goal. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd hate to see the Norwich keeper on <laughs> on Saturday uh, have to deal with a bobble on the pitch, wouldn't you? <laughs> Are you talking about Brian Gunn? Oh, poor old Brian. There is, yeah, a, there, is a gun, there is a gun in goal for yeah. now. So, yeah, you never know. Lightning <laughs> may strike twice. Yeah. Hopefully. But I know I can't believe these pictures now because they go out with a fork at half time and there's no divots. Yeah. So what? What? Well, what uh, why do they not have divots on these sausage. pictures? I think it's <laughs> I think it's justification. Or is that like perhaps he has to earn his money? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they are amazing. Though. It's like a yeah. sneaker table. Isn't and it is. They're yeah. so good to play from the back. Really. I mean, when we played, those big old lumps, weren't well, they? You like to say it's one of the reasons why we didn't play it from the back yeah. because the pitches were so, so poor. So poor. Yeah. But it, you know, it wasn't our style. But no. At That's the right. end of the day, you had to adapt to the pitches. And yeah. You adapt by getting the ball longer yeah. and making the opponents. Yeah. There were days during the season where the instructions were, today is not a day for passing out from the back. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember those? I think that was every week, wasn't it? <laughs> I suppo- <laughs> but I suppose when the Dutchman came, that that because you could give yeah. the ball to France with about eight people around him, couldn't you? And yeah. he'd still come out with the bl- ball and pass it. Yeah. And that was a bit of an eye-opener, actually, I thought. When yeah, and Arnold, came, Arnold as and well. And Arnold as yeah. well with that. 
sort of left foot. Wander the left foot. That wander the left foot. Yeah, brilliant left foot. Yeah. Amazing times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got lots to talk about uh, today, and yeah. especially the Stanley and Derby coming up against Norwich on Saturday. Whoa. But we'll just push that to one side for a moment, because as I said earlier, we've got a special guest here today. Uh, he's, he, he's come along on his birthday today, but more of that in a moment <laughs> or two. Um, I want to. We've got we've got a wonderful shirt from the 1960s here. Come up to the microphone here, um, and and. This, Laurie, that um, was the shirt I first had. Memories. Yeah, 67 when I joined. I think that was the shirt, was it? I don't, that looks like it. Yeah, this is. <laughs> I bought this as a 62 shirt. Oh, so, did you? Yeah. yeah. Probably still would have, because they obviously didn't change them then, didn't they? They didn't change them so much, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, actually, when I joined, Bill McGarry was manager. He was quite a fearsome character, Bill McGarry. He um, sort of ruled by fear. <laughs> Everyone yeah. was scared of him, especially the apprentices. We used to have a little um, relay. So if he was coming down the corridor up from his office, we'd all hide in the... Because we had when you were apprentice, you had to clean the toilets, clean the floor, clean the baths. So we'd all pretend to be doing our little, little jobs and so we didn't have to <laughs> confront him. And it, but he was quite fearsome. But he was, he was a very... One of these managers that was all... Hard training, weights, lots of running, not a lot of ball work, that kind of manager. And he was quite scary. In fact, he used to get me, because I obviously was not very tall, I used to swing from these girders. He made me swing from these girders every morning to try and stretch me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll what tell you, you I never grew an inch, but I had the longest <laughs> arms in British football. I want to be like you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Is it... <and> he, <laughs> I used to like, swing there like a baboon. I, 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 just, is it well, right I didn't come down unless he bollocked me. Is it, so, <laughs> is it right that you wrote for a trial to the club? Is that right? No, I was taken down by one of my teachers from um, Lowestoft, yeah. And I, I came for a trial and then I never, I stayed after the trial. You never looked back? No, and I never, then uh, I stayed there, there well, till I... Left really. Well, a couple, yeah. of, couple of North Suffolk boys here, yeah. and you're also from North Suffolk, aren't you? Well, my my in-laws were from uh, Hopton, so yeah, but because uh, uh, Laurie was a news agent. I had a shop there, yeah. Yeah, Hopton. yeah. My wife used to run it there. Yeah, yeah. According, yeah. and according yeah. to my uh, mother-in-law, who was never wrong, apparently, <laughs> <laughs> a very lovely man. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I think that's obvious yeah. as well. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. lovely. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah, what, right. what do you reckon the score's going to be on Saturday? I reckon three 0 to town? To t oh, yeah. Well, I'll just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. have to double what's that, check. What's that, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for coming along. Great Cheers, to see Mark, you. you Thank so you. What, what was it like in those early days? What do you mean, in, in, in what respect? In, in town, what was it like there? Who were the, who were the characters that well, were there? Well, the characters, in the we, had, we had some good characters. There was uh, Danny Hegan. A, he was a good, a clever little midfield player. He was a bit volatile. Um, who else did we have? We had Joey Broadfoot. Little Joey, who would run out of the ground. He was so fast he couldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, who else did we have? Uh, well, Viljohn was playing then. What do you call him, Viljohn? Frank Brogan, uh, the winger. He used to get in his car and that was like going into an opium den. They'd be full of <laughs> cigarettes <you> know, <laughs> all the way home. But there were some really good characters then. Really good characters. Ray was there, was he? Like that? Ray Crawford was there for a while. Yeah, he... I didn't, he was there when I first joined. Did he leave in sixty? Not was he there? Sixty yeah, nine. Yeah, Bobby he was there came, for a couple of years. Yeah. yeah, Ray Crawford. Was it Billy Baxter there? Yeah, Billy was there. Billy Baxter, and he was he wasn't a tall centre half, was he? No, Billy? he wasn't. He, he was, was really good leap. Good leap, yeah. Yeah, good leap. And really Chopper? good player. Chopper, oh, Chopper was there. Yeah, yeah. Chopper. Yeah, little Is that Chopper Jefferson. Chopper, Chopper Jefferson. Jefferson. Yeah, we <laughs> we went on tour to Zambia once, and um, we 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 had a few games and. We, we had to play the final one in this stadium. And they had a player called Gibby Zulu who didn't wear boots. So, uh, and the, but the games were hard. And before the game, Chopper was getting his boots out and screwing studs in. So we said, what are you doing? That's hard out there. He said, we've got to stop this Gibby Zulu. <laughs> so, boom, straight on his foot. <laughs> And in fact, we played in the game and we were winning 1-0 and the referee wouldn't blow the whistle. That went for about 120 minutes and he gave him a penalty. It's a bit like today. <laughs> and we now, went yeah. to walk off the players and Robson came on and stopped us because we knew they were cheating and we would all walk off, but he made us stay on and play the rest of the game. Zambia. Zambia, yeah. One Zambia, one nation. Wow. <laughs> so you, you um, mentioned Baxter, of course. There was the 
confrontation, wasn't there? Between yeah, that Bobby. was in the, that was after I played in that game after the Leeds game we lost, and uh, he'd left Billy Baxter and Tommy Carroll out, and they caught. I think they caused a ruckus in the players' room afterwards, and they came down into the dressing rooms to because we'd lost. They were taking the mick, and all of a sudden that kicked off. And I think Cyril was fighting one in the drying room and Robson was on top of one where I sat. Actually, I got bloody pushed out of the way. And <laughs> he was pounding him and we had to pull him off. Rob Pull the manager off. off. Yeah, he was pounding. Um, I think that was Tommy Carroll he was hitting and Cyril was <laughs> fighting someone else and we had to pull them off. And he uh, next morning, <laughs> Robson called us in and gave him a bollock, gave us all a bollock and for pulling him off. <laughs> 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 but it was, I mean, it was obviously a bit of player power, the, sort of the old guard. Well, that, that, that was a sort of catalyst for change because he then got rid of all the, the, a, a certain clique in the club and then the youngsters started to come through more. You know, he started to rely on more youth, new team. Yeah. And that's, that was sort of a catalyst for change at the club, which obviously then that went on and on and on till we... Well, fifteen years or whatever it was till oh, we just, yeah. just the beginning of an amazing time. That wasn't was, it? yeah, that, yeah, yeah well, that was the catalyst of that, I think. Yeah. And obviously, you were um, not the <sighs> tallest of keepers, no. but you were renowned for um, your bravery. Um, you know, striker comes in, you weren't afraid to get, you know, get no. stuck in no. there with the with the strikers. No, I did that once too often. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Andy well, Gray. Andy it? Gray took me out. Yeah, I think he rearranged my face. <laughs> 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 One day, yeah, at Villa Park. Um, um, yeah, and uh, we, I got a, le a lot of the <laughs> letter, a few days later, uh, the boss showed me this letter. He said, someone had hit a really hard shot and I'd gone and parried it and I went and got the rebound. And this fellow wrote, in my day, we were taught to hold the ball <laughs> in football. <laughs> it's a tough school. Yeah, it's tough, tough school, school, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was that in the 89th minute? Was it the last that, that was that, that was in about that was about ten minutes from the end, and I think uh, oh, Trevor, went, Trevor in went in goal. Trevor went in goal the last few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Trevor went in goal. And yeah. he had another one as well. In Seventy-seven. A year later, he got kicked in the head from David Cross. Did I? I can't remember. Yeah. That it must have been so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I must have. <laughs> well, you've had one kick in the head too many. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. I have. <laughs> and Alan Hunter went in goal. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you remember now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, was that, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, probably yeah, do. But, uh, but when the, with the with the Andy Gray one. I was just looking through the the websites. Yeah. You actually went back to your digs. Is that right afterwards? I did. I stayed at my digs because he. Uh, I was so bad that the boss didn't want my wife to see me. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so then, but then you had a. Apparently, you had a whiskey, but you had to sip it through a straw. A straw, I did. Yeah. I had a whiskey through a straw. I had yeah. to have a lot of stuff through straws for a few days. Yeah. So you lost, I mean, you lost, you lost <laughs> the number of teeth, did you? In, Sorry. You lost the number of teeth. Is that right? Yeah, I made them repaired. Though it cost a lot of money. No. <laughs> so Andy Gray owes you that, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> Mind yeah. you, Andy would try and whack somebody at every set. Every loose, time, every corner, yeah. And, yeah, you know, he was. He could be a bit vicious, couldn't he? Yeah. Was Andy awkward, Gray. Awkward guy because he used to put both arms up. Yeah. To head the ball, and you couldn't get past the arms. No, that's you know, right. You, know, you sort of make contact with the elbows, so. Yeah. And he used to get away with it as well. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was his technique, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you played in front of some big crowds in yeah. those years, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Yeah, I think the. The biggest one at Portman Road ever was 38, was it, or something against Leeds in the FA Cup or something yeah. one year? Well, that yeah. was a that was four four games. Four games, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we played. Yeah. Four I games. went to the one at Leicester for nil nil the yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, and then we won three two on the Thursday. Yeah, that was. We, we we looked at um, Burns, Wes Burns' goal with the outside of his foot when he he's bent yeah. it in the other week, saying that was one of the best yeah. goals you'd ever see. But Clive Woods. Yeah, hit one of the best goals you've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, he curled well. it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. to win so, it. Yeah, that's right, he did. Yeah. Woodsy is a lovely lad. But then Woods. he played Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Till we got a result. He didn't have a rest. <laughs> no. Is <laughs> no. that when Walker got called up? Sorry. Did Walker? Yeah, get he got called up, up in the semi, didn't he? Yeah. I think. Yeah, when we lost to uh, yeah. Chelsea. Yeah, he that's did. That's when he made his debut. Yeah, that was when yeah. he made his debut because Alan was injured, wasn't he? Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah was, that was a replay as well. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was from Villa Park. On yeah. the poor pitch as well. Yeah, very yeah. poor. Yeah, and we had, I think we had a goal disallowed that would, was offside, but I don't think it was offside when you look back on the no. replays. But there you go, that's Sailor V, that's life, isn't it? Didn't have VAR then, did they? Uh, thank God, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Beatty and Hunter in front of you. I mean, we've got Beats Cushion here, and yeah. a little statue next to you. What, what were they like to have in front of you? 
well, they were solid. Weren't they Be- beat was a brilliant footballer, wasn't he? Everyone can agree yeah. that he had all the attributes of of, of uh, pace, didn't he? Power. He was good on the ball. Could read the game as well. Beat. He was yeah. cracking footballer. He yeah. could drink as well. He could drink. Yeah, yeah. He could. He could change his car every month. He change uh, his car. <laughs> smoked like a trooper. trooper. Yeah. Well, they both used to smoke, didn't they? That's, that was Alan's warm up before the game. A quick fag. <laughs> The strange, the strange man, man yeah. <laughs> but that was a longer warm up than Trevor Weinberg. Oh, Trevor, have. have you ever seen him at the golfer warm up? The golfer, yeah. when he goes like this, that was Trevor's warm up. <laughs> he did it in a seated position. As yeah, well. in a seated <laughs> position, yeah, Trevor. He didn't move. No. <laughs> Came in, sat down, did yeah. the warm up, was yeah. there for like an hour, yeah. and went on the pitch and played. Yeah, scored a goal, come back. Goal, come back. <laughs> <laughs> but never pulled a muscle in his Ever. life. No, Ever. no. Never no, got didn't. injured. Sometimes he forgot to take his, his coat hanger out of his shirt. He looked as though his coat hanger was yeah. in. The biggest, unbelievable. He's really, yeah, he was. He was brilliant. Actually, I go see him now because he's not been very well lately, yeah. Trev. And uh, I, was, I, I went to see him the other week. Did you, you play walking football with, with, yeah, with Trevor? He, he, I, yeah, I introduced Trevor to walking football. Yeah. Did, did they realise who he was or not? No, I'll tell you what happened because I took him there and we were playing this morning and he kept rattling these shots in for miles away and a lad came up to me he said who's that bloke he's rather good I said oh, he's not too bad I said he did get a couple of England caps <laughs> 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 I'm surprised he didn't flick the ball up and head it yeah. into the 30 yards <laughs> he scored it we played it we played yeah. it at uh, Anfield and that was my second game 2-2 two, yeah. two. and he scored from a header from the outside the bot, just outside the, bottom, the level on the yeah. penalty area from 18 yards and he bent the header I watched it because it was right behind it yeah. and it went it bent into the top, top corner. corner I've never seen a header anybody yeah. header the ball and it bends in the, uh, he had an ability to hover in the air yeah. Trevor didn't he amazing. could sort of hang there it really uncanny really how it used to hung. be a, a, a thing in your eras didn't it you know when you look at the old programmes and they're jumping up so high yeah. to head the ball you don't see that so much these well, days well I think that's played on the ground a lot more football isn't it and you don't get so much aerial combat now do you no if you get a head of goal it's yeah. not miraculous or, yeah, yeah. That's but, right. but we were always told to jump off one foot yeah, one yeah. footed takeoffs yeah. rather than the two you see yeah. you see players now they always jump with two feet they never actually attack the ball one footed so yeah. that was why you got up higher because you, you, you had a run at it and then stepping up yeah. rather than a standing start. But also, yeah. if it's poor pitches, you've got to play the ball through the air mm. a lot more yeah. anyway. You're not going to be trying to zip it along the no. ground as they are these days on this nice, firm, wet pitch that yeah. Ipswich have now. And then what was it like when these two were in front of you then? They were good, those two. He, he was good helped lad, me out. like that, Laurie. Yeah. Like that, yeah. yeah. Well <laughs> Check, check's in the post. Yeah, yeah what are you going to say, Kat? Yeah, that, well... <laughs> they were they, they worked really well together, you two, didn't you? I mean, you had this sort of um, like this sort of thing, with you, did we? You know? Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. What did we move our hands a bit? No, know. no. <laughs> you tried to move your feet. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, an understanding. Yeah, and that, that's the word I'm searching for. An understanding. Okay, yeah. They had a good understanding with each other. Yeah. But we, but we yeah. knew we knew that any crosses that came yeah. into the box. Yeah. It was a case of well, we'll go for them unless we hear yeah. from from Laurie yeah. or from yeah. Coops as well. Yeah. You know that was that was your understanding. Yeah, that's you just, right. You just yeah. did it. You didn't yeah. have to say anything no. or do anything. You yeah. just did it. But they were very dominant in the air, those two as well, weren't you? I mean, you. He was. Clear well, up. We weren't yeah. bad. No, I mean, yeah. you were as well. It was, yeah. It was. Yeah. You know, it was. Yeah. It was. A, it was good. And yeah. It was really good to follow on and be you know, we because we were always told watch Hunter and Beatty yeah. watch what they do yeah. not off the pitch but on the pitch yeah. watch what they do. <laughs> that was the thing. That was the thing you did. And when you when you watch that. You said, well, I want to be like that. You, yeah. You're never going to be like that, but you always thought we could be like that yeah. sometimes. Yeah, they, they, well, they were another complimentary pair, weren't they? I mean, mm. Beat was blessed with this tremendous pace, wasn't he? He could mop things up. Mm. Yeah. yeah, he could jump as high as high, he needed yeah. to jump. Then he could burst forward from the back and whack one in for about 20, 30 oh. yards. He? he was just right. a phenomenal and, footballer. And big Al. I mean, if he was playing today, he'd be a billionaire, I should he think. Yeah. <laughs> well, he wouldn't be because he'd spend it on cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'd and have fags, 23 and Jensen's. Fags and everything else, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. But he would probably still be swapping his car <laughs> yeah, every week, every I think. Week, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you had, you had Big Al, the strange man. Yeah. He, yeah. he could play out really well from the... Yeah, he could, yeah. In the rugby boots. In the rugby boots. I liked it when he used to kick out the ground near the end. Yeah. Straight over the Portman Road stuff. 
<laughs> he, he, taught me, he taught us to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, we made, a, we it made well. a career out of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were in quite a unique position because you were there in, in the 60s. You saw yeah. the arrival of, of Sir Bobby. Yes. You saw the, you know, the teams that he yeah. built as yeah. we went through yeah. the FA Cup, UEFA yeah. Cup, of course, which yeah. we played yeah. part in. Um, amazing time to be yeah. there. That was an amazing time because you saw that that was like the embryo, of, as we said, when they got rid of the the two players then yeah. the youngsters came through didn't they and uh, you had that team that lasted probably till about the cup final actually and then that changed again didn't he a lot of the players left after the cup final he brought the two Dutchmen in who then that sort of required a different quite a different slightly different style of football didn't it yeah I would think and that served as probably better in Europe as well that mm -hmm. kind of football mm -hmm. which helped was win the UEFA Cup and then um, of which, he left. Of, of, which, of which you played a part. Yes. Bohemians. Yeah, Bohemians Prague. Prague yeah. yeah. And then after that, um, I don't know. He, that, I suppose when Robson left, that started to go down a little bit, didn't it? After that, was it eighty two? When did he leave? Eighty two or? Yeah, eighty two. Eighty two. Yeah. 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 And the team started to break up. Did you? When did you leave? But eighty. I oh, left 86, 86, Russell left 85. Yeah, because when did we get relegated? 85. 80, 85, 80, yeah. No, 86. 86, yeah. The end of, yeah, sorry, I went 85. You went 85. The end of that season. Yeah. Got yeah. yeah. So you two had nothing, no part in that. It was just, it was down to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd, la I'd left then. <laughs> I know. I, know. Fact, I, I, joined, know. I joined in Get 67, and that was the <laughs> season we got promoted to the first division. And I left in 84, and we were in the first division all that time. Yeah. And then we got relegated in 85, did we? Yeah. Six. 86, yeah, yeah. But thanks, we, we but got thanks for reminding me about that. <laughs> 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 well, I always re remember because um, that was when Bill McGarry was manager. We got promoted, didn't he? Which he obviously done a good job. Then he left for Wolves, didn't he, after that? And then Bobby Sammy Robson came. Sammy Chung. Sammy right? Chung, yeah. And Rich I, Tyrrell. I remember the 78 um, for, the, for the FA Cup. I remember going with you and I think it was Roger yeah. to the Marlton Red Lion. Maybe get a free dinner there. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> but we went there, and I think we went there. It was either before the semi final or the final. We went there for our fish and chips yeah. or whatever we did after training. And, um, you know, you're, on the, you're in the squad yeah, sort yeah. of thing. I wasn't in the squad, but Roger was as well, yeah. and all that sort of thing. And we all know what happened to, the, for, to Roger. Roger, brilliant. Yeah. But it was just one of those strange sort of lunches that you have. Yeah. And you, we're all, obviously, everyone's so focused on the game games, and yeah. the cup run and tickets and all these kind of things as well it was it was an incredible just to be not actually involved in the squad but just to be at the club and an Ipswich fan it was yeah. just incredible yeah the sort of the furore about you, you're an Ipswich fan though, wasn't it? yeah well. I was yeah yeah I used to come down and watch him when I was a young lad yeah. that was my yeah. local at the time what the amount of red line? You lived, yeah. you lived across the road, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. I had a few yeah. locals at that time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Pubs? I was one of them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 Moving on. Uh, now there's a big game coming up on uh, Saturday. I've gone, I've gone red, yeah. <laughs> it's um, the East so Anglian you, so you. Derby. I know. <laughs> Uh, it's Ipswich Town, the pride of East Anglia, yeah. against Norwich City. <laughs> and we have someone with us today who's celebrating their birthday today. And they've chosen to spend their birthday with us, which I think is lovely. And uh, he used to be on our old radio show with us every week. Uh, we decided now we've got a, an East Anglian derby back that we ought to bring him on to uh, the YouTube show. Uh, would you make whatever noise you feel appropriate, please? <laughs> it's Captain Canary! <laughs> Get right up to that microphone, Captain. Like the mixture of it's a blue. And it's a blue microphone. Have you noticed that? Yeah, so it's not my uh, yellow one I used to get in the studio. No, we no. used to look after you when you came in the studio. <laughs> yeah. But as it's your birthday today, um, everybody's decided to sing you a song, which I think is really <laughs> nice. So after three, everybody. One, two, three. What is that? Snow is falling all around us. It's it's playing, playing, having fun. Tis the season, back-to-back back promotions. Merry Christmas, 
Norwich scum. Hey! <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you know what? Do you know what? It's taken us... I know we haven't won yet, but we will. Uh, it's taken us so long to have these kind of bragging rights because you've had the upper hand for so many years, haven't you? We have. We have. We, um, you know, for as long as we've been on uh, on the radio with Life's a Pitch, you know, since 2009 when, when the town last beat Norwich, that just does not seem possible, does it? Unless... Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've got to get, got to get it in somehow, and I. Um, yeah, when we you know, you. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it's it's been a long while, but that's why it's fantastic to have this just round the corner, this local derby, because it's been five years since we've had one, and uh, I'm very nervous, as you can imagine, because the stats say we are going to get royally whooped. But who, who knows? Who knows? Derbies can be a funny old game. Yeah, they can, can't they? Yes, they can. They can. They can. They can. Uh, well, look, thank you for coming along and uh, and joining us on the show. It's very brave of you, but you're my amongst friends. My pleasure. Okay, I think anyway. You haven't got One out alive. You One haven't got two. out alive yet. <laughs> uh, in tribute to you, we do have a, a dead canary behind me. Yes, I've noticed that. And have you noticed how dead it is this week? Deflated like our season at the yeah. moment. Yeah. <laughs> Agent Wagner's doing a fantastic job. He is. He is, isn't he? Yeah. Good, yeah. Good riddance to him when he finally goes. <laughs> Got to get rid of the cook first. <laughs> Poor old Delia. Poor yeah. old Delia. Poor old Delia, yeah. Um, uh, of course, there have been some memorable <laughs> matches in the past where town have done well. Uh, Matt's here. Come on, Matt. Come and, come and tell everybody what you brought. We'll get you back on again in a second, Captain. But fight your way through, Matt. Come on. He's got a plastic bag. Uh, yeah, get right up close to that no microphone, Matt. That is. Uh, okay. So um, the story is 1998. My friend was on the ground staff at Portman Road, uh, mostly up at the training ground, but on a match day, he'd be there with his little fort. Um, Norwich, I think lost 5-0, didn't they? Yay! And at the end of that game, the ball was with, I think the Norwich captain, anyway, he weren't very happy, and he hoofed it onto the roof of the, um, I think it was the Pioneer stand, which he managed to hit. And uh, my mate was sent up to get the ball out of the gutter, out of the gutter. And he bought it to me because he was a United fan, Man United fan, so he, no, no use to him. This is the ball that was pulled out the gutter in 19... That is the 5-0 ball. Right. It that is, is the 5-0 ball. Five nil ball. Oh, hey. look at that. That's like a what, holy relic. It's got a little... Uh, if you want to confirm, I, I wanted to give it to you guys because you've got like this museum going here, haven't you? Seems and, so, and yeah. It's a real thing. I mean, he was he was on the ground staff. It's absolutely genuine. No reason to lie to me about it. Wow. wow. Fantastic. And that is like a holy relic of... Uh, yeah, pretty much, uh, yeah. I've been worshipping it in my garage. <laughs> yeah. So it's still got, Port <laughs> still got Portman Road mud on it. Huh? Put Portman Road mud on it. Alex Matthews I'll boot it print. What, what it has got is a big scuff mark yeah, where it hit the roof. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can I give it you guys? I'd, I'd oh, we would be absolutely no in my garage. No, we would be thrilled. What's yeah, because because so, I saw uh, Alex Matthews oh, saying that he got it. That's amazing. And Matt, before you go, Matt, 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 don't let him go. Matt, 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 come back here. Look, come back here. Score on score on Saturday. Uh, I'd work with Butch. He told me it's three one. Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> give him a big round of applause. Well done. Well done. Well done. But Thanks is that, very much is that for coming Mark, in. Is that so? Let's get me right. We won five nil. That was it. Alex Matthew scored a hat trick. Alex Matthew scored a hat trick. Bobby Petter scored two. But Alex, he get the ball, right? but, no, but Alex Matthew said that he, he has a match ball. Yeah, I reckon he must have got one that they used subsequent to the one being knocked on the roof. That all the so he's got not got the ball that he scored a hat trick with. No, so he's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> no, not no, but no, but Alex Matthew's a liar. Well, well mistaken. I would. Uh, okay. Probably is <laughs> more diplomatic. <laughs> so we've we've just we've so just we've got it now. We've just devalued. We've got it. We've, um, yeah, we've exactly. just devalued his ball yeah, now. Yeah, if he yeah, wants yeah. to sell if it, he ever tries it's to sell not it the ball, folks. It's yeah. not the I ball. I think we should before we all go tonight. We should all touch that ball. Okay, ready yeah. for Saturday. We should all touch that. I mean, what a fantastic game. Do you have any memories of Norwich games? I have played in a few. Um, yeah, well, I think we w lost in the quarterfinals of the League Cup. We drew at Norwich, and then. Hang on uh, a minute, it, you missed one there. In the, oh. Thank you. And in the replay, we lost, and Johnny Miller scored two goals, I think. Right. Is that the quarterfinals of the League mm. Cup? I, um, yeah, I think it's the story. Yeah, yeah the story and Johnny Miller got two goals, didn't he? Because he'd only just Who ju just left us to go to Norwich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you. And I think the, st the story was Bobby Robson said... <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> Bobby Lone Robinson voice in the capacity crowd. Yeah. <laughs> that was probably right, yeah. 
poor old John, God rest his soul, old Johnny's yeah. lovely yeah. lad, Johnny. Yeah, was yeah. A nice fella. lad, weren't he? Yeah, any more memories? Not he really, because I, I can't really recall any major memories against Norwich, to be honest. <laughs> Boo! Boo! Did you get bored winning all the time? As a bit no. <laughs> well, I, we, I don't know if I ever won against them. We no, drew twice did, and lost once. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you did. But no. what was it like, both of you, growing up in, yeah. in the lowest off area? Because it's a real sort of border country, isn't it, for both sides? Yeah. Yeah, that is a sort we're, of like... We're, we're a bit too close to them. Yeah, we are really close, aren't we? Because you... you is it disc? Some go to Norwich, some go to and I, <laughs> Ipswich, and I think that's the same where we are. You yeah. get a spattering of Ipswich fans. As but there used to be Norwich fans. <laughs> All the years gone by, there was a lot more town shirts. Yeah, that you saw about about the area yeah. about Lowestoft, and then obviously with what they've done up the road, they've yeah. done very well. They've been better than us, so therefore you see not all the Norwich not, shirts. Yeah, yeah, that which is, is right. not a pleasant sight, I must no, say. That's right. Yeah, I so often see them when I'm driving home. They're all waiting at the bus stop to go to Carra Road. Lots of them. Well, we had to drive yeah, through the puddles and splash them. Yeah, well, I would do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we've got some good memories of, of yeah. the Norwich games. Yeah, yeah I've got will. one one memory. Um, it was about this time of the year, and I used to go to London to get presents for Rita yeah. with my friend. So we used to go down on the train in the morning, early morning. The two of us go down there, and we had a sort of pack that every present we bought for the wives we'd have a pint because <laughs> it was a day off yeah. as you do so the weather wasn't particularly great so but so therefore we you know we did the shopping and we were pretty well oiled and there were lots of presents for the wives so it was great <laughs> so then we came we came back so i got we get back and i get back about one o'clock in the morning or something rolling taxi rolling to my home and i i get in the door eventually get in the door and uh, Rita says, "Do you have a good time?" And I says, "Yeah, look, loads of presents on that sort of thing. Yeah, you you, you stink of booze. You like you absolutely yeah. blotto." Um, we I've just I had a call earlier in the evening from Bobby Ferguson, the manager, and he says he says that you have a friendly match against Norwich tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I didn't Is quite there such a thing. I think we actually lost in the friendly game. So, but I can't remember much about it because <laughs> I was still drunk when I played. Like, how can you say to the manager, "I'm not unfit to play because I'm <laughs> yeah, drunk"? You drunk. had a great game, though. Yeah. Well, I can't remember. I don't <laughs> what about you, Russ? <laughs> Craggy. I mean, the, the, the earliest I can recount is playing when the Fashion You brothers were were playing. We're playing Eastern Counties. Uh, youth league, the under 18s, and we were playing on the pitch at the side of Portman Road, which is now the fan zone. And uh, even those games got a little bit tasty and uh, a little bit physical. And of course, with the the fashion new boys, they could look after themselves. And uh, that was your introduction to it, really. And then um, the league games, not a, not a lot. I missed out on. The one in 85, second leg, because I'd been sent off with Simon Stainrod in the quarter-final of the um, the League Cup, uh, QPR, but we went through, uh, drew the first game in the, the semi-final against Norwich. Uh, I was suspended for that one. Come on, you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pantomime season, for heaven's sake. And then um, in the, the second leg, Bobby Ferguson, wouldn't play me, didn't want to play me. Um, I'd been told by that time that uh, uh, I was going to have to try and find myself a, a club at the end of the season, um, so he didn't want to play me. So I was sat up in the stand watching Norwich, uh, <laughs> thank you, that's better, kick seven <laughs> bells of crap out of the boys that night, and it was the worst, was it Keith Hackett? Yeah, Keith Hackett. Keith Hackett gave the worst refereeing performance I have ever seen, ever, you know, and some of the tackles that went into our lads was just absolutely diabolical. And I was sat in the stand and couldn't do anything about it. And that's the the annoying part of it. You know, the best thing I ever did that night, I, I tried to kick a few of the uh, other team. <laughs> and I also managed to smash the door in the dressing room afterwards as well. <laughs> so I let, it did leave my mark, but yeah, they made it through to the Milk Cup final, won it, and then they, you know, to our to our great delight, they got relegated that season as well. <laughs> so just, didn't quite make up for it, but um, it's nice to see them struggle. 
I've just found a, n- a nice photo on here of you celebrating a goal right in uh, Chris Woods's face <laughs> in, yeah. a, in a derby, who obviously was later your teammate, wasn't he? Well, I didn't know it was Chris Woods. It just had that, yeah, that horrible shirt on. So that was a, <laughs> that'll do for me. I mean, Captain, come back to the microphone because, you know, they have had some horrible shirts. Oh, God. Including the one you've got on now. I mean, how can you walk around with that? Colour shirt on all the while. The, wor- the worst shirt we ever had was the one with the green, the splash paint, like they just chucked a, a, a can of paint at you and there's like little green bits here. We Look, there isn't a lot you can do about canary yellow, is there? It is what it is. And, well, I you don't know. know about that. You can throw it away. Or <laughs> you can actually burn it. I can it imagine you what you could do with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Car yeah. wash. Car yeah. wash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've had some pretty horrendous shirts, I must admit. But yeah. There you go. There you oh, go. no. Yeah, anyway, we'll go back it, over there. Go we'll, on. We'll, see it. we'll see it on Saturday. <laughs> we'll, see it, we'll see it at Portman Road on Saturday, and it's obviously a rare sight. But. Yeah, something special is happening uh, with the East Anglian derby because Ipswich Town fans supporting food banks are collecting again, and this is we're putting rivalries aside for this. Charlie's here uh, to tell us all about it. Charlie Nixon, everybody, give him a round of applause. Thank you. Good Thank to you. see you, Charlie. Uh, tell us what's happening at the weekend. What's happening already, actually? Well, yes, it started already, really. Um, so Monday we launched two GoFundMe pages, and uh, the premise of our group is hunger doesn't wear club colours. So anybody can be affected by poverty, no matter what football team, no, no matter what geographical allegiance you have. So we put that aside for the moment and uh, raise money for food banks. So Monday we started a campaign. And we've been encouraging Ipswich fans to raise money for the Norwich Food Bank and Norwich fans to raise money for Find, who we've been collecting for throughout the whole season. And the response we've got has been phenomenal. So we've raised from Ipswich fans going to Norwich Food Bank, we've raised over £600. And from Norwich fans going to the Ipswich Food Bank Find, we've raised over £500. So everyone's got behind it and it's been absolutely (laughs) phenomenal. And it just shows... it, it just shows the power that football fans can have and football does have. Um, f- we can put rivalries aside. You know, when it comes to half past 12 on a Saturday, I'm not going to be singing Kumbaya with Norwich fans. But <laughs> for now, but, but for now, you know, we can put that aside and we can do something to, you know, help out each other's community. No, I think that's fantastic. And, and so much needed Funny, at the moment, isn't it? It really is. How can fans donate? Um, so look at our Facebook page or our Twitter. We, might, we usually use Twitter more, so that's the best place to look. Um, we're constantly posting links on there, sharing it. Um, Ipswich Town Football Club have shared it. Norwich City Football Club have shared it. Um, the press have shared it, obviously. Um, so yeah, um, look online, look, search up our name, search us up on the GoFundMe site, and you can. Like, and, and we'll also be there on Saturday as well. You can be so in the fan zone. Fan zone, just outside Planet Blue um, on Saturday. So if people got some loose change and want to drop by. Um, we'll be collecting then and obviously physical donations if people fancy yeah, bringing those along. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, look, um, the Life's a Pitch team have got together uh, this evening and we'd like to make a contribution uh, of £250. Oh, thank you so much. OK. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's really, really... So, you know, well done for what you're doing. Uh, we want to support it and uh, see Mark over there. Uh, and he'll give you the bank details and all that kind oh. of stuff. So we'll sort that out before oh, you go oh, tonight. So you so have much. that. Uh, good luck and thanks for what you're doing. I think it's brilliant. What do you think the score's going to be though? Oh, I'm going, I'm going with Butch three-one. I think I think we're going to do our classic. Let's concede early and then <laughs> <laughs> give them a head you start. Know, you know how it goes. <laughs> we'll let you have that one. Then. Yeah. We'll get the job done. Brilliant, Charlie. Thank you very much. Give him a round of applause, everybody. Thank you, Charlie. Now. Something we do every week, and uh, it's time for our Keep It Up Challenge, sponsored by Ginger Pickle. <laughs> right, so, Laurie, um, you got your trainers on, haven't you there? You got your trainers on? You still playing walking football and things? No. No? Okay. I've lost my like, Well, let's see. If you'd like to go over into our performance area over there, um, there's the leaderboard. We have actually uh, managed to clean it. <laughs> with a little bit of help. Our so Scoey is at the top with 79. Chambo 59. Alan Lee 58. Butch has dropped off the leaderboard, <laughs> uh, which he's very pleased about. So, Laurie, you have 60 seconds. Okay, Terry will time. F- no, no. Once you start, no, that's it. We start counting. Okay, so wait for Phil's whistle. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready, Phil? And you're going to all count as well? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> Off you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, tw
<laughs> 11. Well done. Well done. You beat Mark Murphy. You beat me. <laughs> Level with Mickey Stockwell. <laughs> that's all right, Laurie. That's not bad for a keeper, is it? Not bad no, for a keeper not, at it's all. It's not bad for a 95-year-old, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These be like it. <laughs> Only you can say those things, Terry Butcher. <laughs> yeah. Well, talking I know about him too well. Yeah, I know. Talking about that, you know, we um, we were talking before. Um, we actually shared uh, our car journeys in from Lowest Oft and back again, <laughs> all that sort of thing. And um, Laurie was because uh, I was just a little fledgling sort of thing, and well, a big fledgling, but uh, <laughs> yeah. And, I, and he used to drive. He's drive his Datsun 120Y. In those days, it was you know now it's Nissan, but yeah. he would drive it and drive it very well. But he would he would uh, he would enter into conversation with me, and he would try to goad me and try to try to try his little tricks on me, wouldn't he? <laughs> I would have a few little tricks. He'd have yeah. a few little tricks, yeah. and he would. He I did would... one. I think one day though, that was a. <laughs> we were going down, and I thought he's a young lad. I'll test his character, see how he how he reacts. You see, so we're driving along, and I kept going. All right, butch. <laughs> I'd done it about four times. He he, tur he turned to me with that like, icy glare like that. <laughs> and he said, if you do that once more, I will put you through expletive window. <laughs> so this was me. <laughs> All the way back. <laughs> but yeah, I, he did have a good character, I found out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, it was. Um, yeah, it, um, four, the fourth time or the fifth time. Yeah. There, there, wasn't, there wasn't. There wasn't a fifth time coming. Yeah. I tell you now. <laughs> so as much as I admired him, yeah. he's one, of, one of my heroes. He was going to go through, through that window. window. Yeah. <laughs> so he was one of your heroes, because obviously yeah. most stuff and and uh, both. Well, right, he's a local boy and yeah. all that sort of thing. Yeah, he was. He was. Wow. Yeah. yeah, one of the guys and. Having watched the team and watched yeah. Laurie play yeah. and all that sort of thing, it was it was yeah yeah yeah. But he, su he would still have put me through the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably would. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah I probably would. Just a yeah. reminder: if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to uh, punch that like button, please. <laughs> we want some more likes uh, and also some uh, yeah. subscribers. So uh, subscribe, please, uh, if you can. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, it does help us going forward uh, with the channel. Uh, time for the news in brief this week from Phil Ham from twtd.co.uk in association with John Keeble Cars in Bramford. Put that news hat on. Come on, with it. Don't like it still. Don't no, like our it. friends from the North American Supporters Club, Mick, have they've been in touch saying it was a gift. Don't be so ungrateful. Yeah, you can't be at uh, yeah, Christmas. Yeah, did, yeah. They say, did they say gift or was the was the F? <laughs> something that should have been in there. Phil, just pull it down a little bit at the front. Do you think a bit like more? That? Yeah, no, a bit more. No, a bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can still see your eyes. Yeah. Yeah, just about. Yeah. Anyway, so Saturday marks the second anniversary of the appointment of manager Kieran McKenna. I think that deserves a big cheer, doesn't it? Does that not warrant a super Kieran McKenna? We've got super Kieran McKenna. He knows exactly what we need. Wolfie at the back. <laughs> hey, yeah, and yeah. well, he thanks has, for the clean version. That's very good. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Um, an unknown to many at the time. The Northern Irishman has taken blue, the Blues through a remarkable two years, which have climbed from twelfth in League One, having been jettisoned but from the FA Cup by Barrow. Remember that, Terry? We were both there, weren't we? We were there. To, to second... Oh, dear. When you think the difference now... I know. To... Why? I know. To second in the championship, 10 points ahead of third. Um, more new... We, every week we talk about records, don't we? More new records this week. Town of the first side in any of the top four divisions to reach 50 points this season. And for the first time before Christmas in the club's history. And now I've netted 100 league goals, 112 in all competitions, and picked up 100 points during 2023 which is remarkable. Um, overall, his time in charge, ignoring the Sunderland match when he uh, watched from the stands a couple of days after his appointment, um, Town have played 104 matches, won 62, drawn 27 and lost just 15. A win percentage of 59.61, higher than any manager in the club's history. Hopefully on Saturday, to mark the anniversary, he will become the first town boss since Jim McGilton to win the East Anglian derby. That would be the perfect way to celebrate, wouldn't it? Uh, and the Tractor Girls, Tractor Girls are, um, are in rearranged Adobe Women's FA Cup third round action at the AGL Arena in Felixstowe on Sunday against Lewis. 
who play in the Barclays Women's Championship a tier above the Blues. The game was originally scheduled to be played last Sunday, but was postponed due to waterlogged pitch. The winners of the tie will host Charlton, currently top of the championship, in round four. Uh, the rescheduling of the cup tie means the big FA... WNL Southern Premier. I should have. I should have practiced that bit before I started, shouldn't I? Um, you, you, you would, we, wouldn't you? As a, as a, as a, as a professional. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I never get it wrong. No, no. Um, the All right. FAWNL Southern Premier Division game against Leeds Portsmouth, which was originally set for Sunday, will now be played at a later date. Here endeth the news. Thank you for the news. Thank you. You take your hat off now. There we go. That's a wonderful hat. We all love that, don't we? Yes. It's marvellous. Yes. Paddington S. I, th I think I need a Santa hat, don't I? Oh, oh, Ed's got no, it. No, Ed's Ed, got that. Yeah. He's carrying it. Ed, who was there, of course, the other night. Wasn't yeah, he? with Elton with John, John, who apparently loves us with his uh, Ipswich Town jumper on. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was good to see the pair of them, wasn't it? And, uh, and the, at, uh, will there be an Ed Sheeran stand at Portman? I was sat in the Elton John stand at, uh, at, at Watford. One day, maybe there'll be an Ed well, Sheeran Well, Mark stand. Ashton was here last week. Who saw that? Yeah, great episode. Lots of views for 9, that last week. People watched it, I think. Yeah, yeah it's, it's up there. And um, I, I should have asked him how much it would have cost us to get make that the Life's a Pitch TV stand for the rest of the season. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at some of the sponsors in the room here. Yeah, we can get together. Come on. We know a sign man. <laughs> anyway, um, let's have a look and see what's happened to Ipswich Town on this day in the past. Brought to you in association with our friends at Fred Olsen Logistics. <laughs> Well, Saturday the 14th of December, we're starting off in 1957. So, a couple <laughs> of years before I was even born. Bobby Johnston scored in a 2-0 home win over Doncaster Rovers. Johnston later moved to Canada, but failed in a bid to become a singer. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Saturday the 14th of December, 1963, which was the year before you... Started there, lawyer, was it? 67, I'd start. 67, was it? I thought you said 64. Uh, Jackie Milburn's men remained rooted to the bottom of Division 1 as they suffered a 3-1 reverse at Burnley. There wasn't a lot happen on the 14th of December. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you come and watch... Jackie Milburn's team, if she's a team at all. I saw them. In, I saw them in the early sixties after they when they won the league and the season after um, quite often. But so I can't remember. I don't think I came down to see Jackie Milburn's team. No, I can't well, recall. Did you, I mean, if you did come down, would you have had to have something bigger than a milk crate to stand on? <laughs> yeah, that? because I couldn't see above. You yeah, probably, you probably have to yeah. have a crane or something <laughs> like that, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Stand on your shoulders. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll talk about height and goalkeeping. Five for eight was pretty short for a goalkeeper in that. Era. Yeah. These days, goalkeepers are all about six foot seven. Aren't well, they? You, that's funny you should say that because I think, you know, probably by today's stands up, my grandson plays in a team who's got a little goalkeeper who's just been to Norwich Ooh. and he's quite, he's a good goalkeeper and he's been on sort of, he's only 10, but they take them early now, don't they? And there, there's some kind of um, test now they can ascertain how tall they're going to be. So, um, he apparently would be six foot two because they can tell that by the bone density or something, and they they didn't accept him. They set they accepted a lad who's they think is going to be six foot seven. So probably me or Coop, we would never even get a chance now right. because you you know you you have to be six foot well mid six foot I would think. Yeah. Or have yeah. long arms. Or have long arms, oh, like I did, swinging <laughs> from the chandelier. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's. But there's not there's now there's there's not a, a great many uh, crosses coming to the no, box. There isn't. The no, right. no. So goalkeepers don't have to be big and powerful no. to go and collect well, I suppose a cross. That they fill the goal up, and that I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, that 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 that's what they were looking at, which is you know, a strange that they can tell how tall you're going to be. Mm. Do you think? Yeah. Do you, Odd. I mean, do you, do you think there are kind of goalkeepers that are overlooked then? By professional clubs. Well, maybe. I, don't, I, I mean, I think you've got to be taller than I was. I think you've got to be six foot. I think six foot would be. I, I can't minimum. see why a person minimum, with six yeah. foot couldn't play now. No, but they t tend to go for really giants, don't they? I don't know what is our goalkeeper. Well, no, he's not that tall. The one in the minute is he? Is he about six foot? No, he's. Hang on, I'll just have a check. He's about. He's about. <laughs> about six one or something is like he? that. He's not. He isn't that big. No, no. But he's I mean, he's very yeah. good with his feet. Yeah. But when not we train, when we train, like, and we used to have the five a side in the gym. Yeah. You would always be my pick of a goalkeeper yeah. in the five a side yeah. goals. 
Yeah. It was shot stopping you yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Hadke's yeah. six Seven foot four. four. Six, six four. He's six four. Mm. Is I he think gone? what it is is, is nah. because we used to goalkeepers being so much yeah. taller that you get goalkeepers who are uh, yeah six four. Six they four, look they short. Look short. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's not six foot four. Oh, I didn't think he was that no. tall, but because the other goalkeeper's taller, isn't he? That makes yeah. Wolfie yeah. like yeah. Chris, six four Chris eight. He's about um, six five, isn't he? Yeah, six five. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you know that is how that that, that what they want now in this. And a word about Coops, for. who was there with you all the while, oh, pretty much you were there. Yeah, he was really consistent. He was a good keeper, Coops. He was he was consistent, weren't he? He mm. didn't make many mistakes. He was reliable and really a good goalkeeper, yeah. yeah he didn't yeah. come for many crosses either, no. No, no. Well, no. well they let you do that. Well, that's right, yeah. 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 I didn't mind yeah, that. You, you, the ball away. you mop up, yeah. Yeah, but no, it was... Because um, your, 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 your reflexes are very sharp, because yeah. you're, you're a good cricketer as well, yeah. weren't you? Yeah. you? You played a lot I think of cricket. It, I mean, it, if you do stay on your line and you don't come for crosses, you, you're then in a position, if someone does beat you, to get a good chance of saving it, aren't you, really? Yeah. So tell 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 us about the the, the trip to Lords every <laughs> year for the first Test match when you used to miss training. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to have a sore throat the first Test match of the year every year, miss training. And I'd done it for a couple of years. And I don't know if Rob, Bobby Robson believed me or not. Anyway, time passed. And came the end of the season the next year, I was taken to a hospital to have my tonsils out. <laughs> 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 and I never had a sore throat in my life. <laughs> so I, they took my tonsils out. <laughs> I was eating ice, ice cream for two weeks. Dude, somebody, somebody saw you the, on the TV. Lammy saw me Mickey in the Lambert. crowd, yeah. yeah. Lambert saw. He, I don't think he told. I, I hope he didn't. And did you? Was it was it right as well? You used to. You used. To, someone should take you to the Lords in the car. Yeah. And you used. To, you used to go. Obviously, come through Ipswich. Yeah. And you used to duck down. Duck down in the in seat, the seat yeah. so that no one could see you. <laughs> well, that was true. Yeah. I, I. I was a cricket. I used to love my cricket. Only yeah. going to Lords. You're so. left-hander. Yeah, left-hander. You didn't, didn't bat right-hand, but you didn't uh, left-hander. Yeah. Yeah. No. Everything. You were left-handed though. No. I thought you bat batted left-handed. No. Well, you told me you did a little while ago. No, I was just warming up oh, beforehand. Were, yeah. <laughs> that was, I was, uh... were you a wicket keeper okay. as well? Sorry? Wicket keeper as well? No, no, I played no. slips. Slips, I like the slips. Yeah, I played in the slips, quick in the slips. So did you play for the Ipswich team? We, be I'll tell you, we did. We, had, we used to play um, like Essex. We used to have matches every year. Um, we'd play Essex or Surrey or we had... Um, um, what, sort the of mixed, team? The yeah, yeah, we'd pick a team. Yeah. Big Hunter played, Beat played. You you played in some, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. 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 I remember yeah. The, the funniest one, we on played Portman on Road. Portman Road yeah. against Essex. And, uh, the, uh, you know, you, we used to have them um, dugouts where they would go down, wouldn't they? You, you'd go down below the level of the ground. Well, Bobby Robson was fielding in front of this dugout and someone hit a ball straight to him. He caught it and disappeared down the dugout. <laughs> And all of a sudden, he reappeared with a ball in his hand. <laughs> and the umpire, out. <laughs> yeah. That, that was that funny. Was Would there funny. be a competition for, for slip then? Because Bobby used to be first slip, didn't he? Because he was no much. He well, didn't want to run. Well, this particular day, he was standing in front yeah. of the dugout and he disappeared. And he came back. Oh, that might have been Graham Gucci caught somebody. A really top cricketer because yeah. they had all the top players down there. Yeah. That was really good. We used to have all the sort of, that was good. That was a good fun. Can you imagine that happening now? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't. Mind you, the pitch would be a good wicket, wouldn't it, at That'd the moment? That would be lovely, be yeah. Fantastic. That'd, cool. That'd zip, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, certainly yeah, would. Zip off the top. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, now, look, we're running right out of time. We really are running right out of time. Um, one person we haven't had a score prediction from yet is Captain Canary. Uh, come up to the microphone, Captain. Here we go. Come on. What do you reckon, Captain? <clears throat> My head says... 3-1 to Ipswich. <laughs> <laughs> My heart. I'll take a draw as it stands okay. now. I'll take a draw. But uh, I'd love to see us nick at 2-1, but I don't, I don't think okay. that's going to happen. Well, look, as ever, you're a great sport. And as it is your birthday, can we sing him a song again? Not a happy birthday. No, the other one. You've all got the words. Come on, just in case anybody's just tuning in missed it earlier. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to have someone here to sing to, isn't it? And thank you, Will, very much for um, sorting out the lyrics for us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Uh, so off you go. One, one three. two, three. Snow is falling all around us. Ipswich playing, having fun. Tis the season, back-to-back promotions. Merry Christmas, 
Norwich, Norwich scum. Hey! <laughs> Give a big round of applause. Well what a captain. sport. Well done, Captain. Fantastic. Uh, just before we finish, uh, we've got the Man V Fat uh, scores for this week. And here, we go. Here, we go. here they are. And they're coming up on the screen as well this week. Uh, Man Titty 2, Pork Vale 1. Yes, get in there. Seattle Quarter Pounders 6, to lose a few pounds 8. <laughs> LA Galaxy Bar 1, Far From Athletic 11. Argentina 8, Dinamo Kebab 7. Hardly Athletic 9, FC 20 Stone 7. And a big shout out to Steve Jones who achieved his 10% loss and an invite to all town fans who might want to lose a bit of weight in the new year. Give us a look, www.manvfatfootball.org slash Ipswich. And that's from Man V Fat Mark. Give them all a big round of applause because they are fantastic. Uh, and that's it, Laurie Sybil. We love you so much. You, would you want him back? Yes. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure there are more stories to tell. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think the score's going to be Saturday? Well, use your mic. 2-0 uh, to town. Excellent. Butch? Well, 3-1 because I thought 3-0 initially, but we always concede a goal. Yeah. Perhaps we'll concede the first one and then win 3-1. Yeah. Russ? 2-1. Phil? I'll go 3-0. I'm confident. Ooh. No, I'm going to go for the beat 3-1. I think. Uh, and, of course, my prediction of us being in the top two still stands. Although I was informed by Dan earlier, who who took my advice from Come Hither Design right at the beginning of the season when I said that we were going to be top two. He sidled up to me tonight and said, did I put any money on it? I said, no, I didn't. He did. Ooh. <laughs> Surely, Dan, I should get some kind of... Yeah. Some commission fee. from that? Yeah, fee. Yes, no, he's off. Do. 10%. Anyway, look, thanks, Laurie. Thank you very much for coming. Give a big round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Thanks to our main sponsor, DPS Tech. We're also supported by All About Hearing, Ginger Pickle, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, The Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Fred Olsen Logistics, John Keeble Cars in Bramford, and The Dove in St. Helen Street in Ipswich. Thank you, Capacity Crowd. You've been amazing. Uh, first time we've had an away fan in, possibly the last. <laughs> Uh, we'll be back uh, soon on your uh, podcast or your YouTube channel. Uh, in the meantime, up the town and come on, Saturday. Come on. Come on. Come on.